I can check. Anybody in two lands wishing to check into the net today, go ahead, please. I mean, that switch should work, but it's not working at all. So that can be the coax of the switch. Coax connecting that, Anybody checking that, it's a piece of cake. So I can check that. And then, uh, and then check the switch. Okay, nothing heard. Let's go for one. I can't Anybody believe how well that antenna's now. working. Come out, please. That's doing very well. Not an honor transmit yet, but so far I am pleasantly surprised. All right. All right, I checked the connector. All right. The now connector there. is good. Uh, let's, we'll go so the antenna the jumper, the there. three foot jumper that I was using, is fine. Seven, seven, and again, how you check it is you get an ohm meter for those who don't know. You take your two ends, doesn't make a difference when you're checking ohms, what side you want to use. And in this case, this meter will give me an indication. That's Coast Guard. Turn that down for a minute. Alright. Um, and that's how you check. If I have that sound, that means I have... A connection or continuity from one point to another if I was checking a piece of wire or something like that uh, if I'm checking against it for instance uh, with the coax it has we'll say two wires the center and the shield and I don't want the two to connect so if I go from shield to center as I was showing you yesterday uh, and if I got that that tells me I have a short see so I wouldn't want that so meanwhile what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in antenna one and I'm going to put this one in antenna 2. And when I do this, I should get a beep. And I'm not. So that's telling me I've got a bad switch. Alright. Now let's see if 2. Nope. Let's go to 2. Hold on. Nope. I'm not getting it there either. Now am I getting it on the ground side? That I should see. Yeah. All right. So I am getting it on the ground side, which is not a big deal at this point because I got to get it on the center. So I got to find out why I'm not. So let me open this little puppy up and I'll be right back to you. All right. I came over here for a minute because I'm going to have to do some spraying and I didn't want to spray over near the radio. Now, if you can see how this works, it's basically a simple on off switch. When I switch it one way, it removes the points from one side which is down here and it allows the other ones to connect that little piece right there is the center where the center of the antenna screws into we're gonna call it the hot side so this hot side connects to that little piece in there which is isolated which is isolated it's not touching because of this insulator here so that's isolated the signal then in return when that touches travels up to the center pin on this one which is also isolated and the same when I switch it the other way it pushes that one away disconnecting it and allowing the other one to connect which goes up to again the center which is isolated the grounds are all grounded to the same so that doesn't make a difference now why isn't it working this is simple they're connecting it should work the points the contacts look good meaning right down in where am I here right down in there see your shininess that's clean so I don't know what the problem is here Now, uh, not totally happy with the little bit of, that's touching. I'd rather have more touching than that. So this is a, a cheap switch, basically. A little brake cleaner. Because the better switches have more of a contact point. Uh, because when this connects, basically, I'm at the mercy of that little point. And I'd rather have more of a connection at that point. So.
So even if this switch does work after a cleaning, I am going to start looking for a little bit better switch because I am not happy with, like I say, the contact points on that on this switch. Uh, they make them as well with a a plate and uh, like a dimple in the plate. And the opposite side has the reverse dimple. So when you put it into place, it goes ka-chunk. And that whole dimple fits in. So you've got a complete um, connection, so to speak. This one will work in an emergency if I can figure out why it's not working. Could have been just dirt. I don't know. Let's get the old meter over here. Once I find it. There it is. Now that it's open, it'll be a little bit easier. So, so if I go from this, let's just turn the switch this way for a minute. That means this side here is connected. If you look in there, you'll see that this point on this side is connected to the center bar. So this is the side that should be. So I should hear some sound. Now I'm hearing sound. So that tells me it was just really dirty. All right, now let's flip it the other way. And now it should be the opposite side. All right, okay, so I got a good sound there. So I can probably get away with using this. However, I don't like it, but I will use it. I'd rather have more of a contact there. I'm wondering if there was a way I could modify it. But no. All right, I'll put it back together and we'll try it again. When are these is longer? So I want to make sure I put the short one in. The victory net. This is like a. Um, well, don't scare me like that. Well, it's what a religious you net, what but it's you not all religious talk, if you know what I mean. Uh, you know, they do a prayer to get started. If somebody's not feeling good or somebody is in need of a prayer. Uh, they give it. Uh, other than that, it's just everybody kind of like just has a, a, a good talk, good conversation. Um, you know, and uh, it's a good net. USL, yes sir. Mike, Charlie, Tango, uh, oil, you can listen to it on a short wave, uh, or if you're, if you're on amateur that radio, on that's where you go. But meanwhile, let me turn that down for a minute and see what happens. I made that switch. I do want to go down to Home Depot though today or later this evening because um, I want to get some soft uh, copper flashing um, that I can wrap this with and have it a little bit better looking than just using copper tape. Now the copper tape works. It's not a, an issue with it not working. It's conductive. It'll work. It's going to you know keep everything where it's supposed to be. Um, however, I would rather have it look a lot neater. So by picking up some copper flashing, or uh, if I can find some soft copper, I can just do what I have to do. 
so that's what I'm going to do there. Now I did redo the front, so what I need to do now is is I got to cut uh, some lettering for it because I want to put antenna one or at least a numeral one over here on the left side, off up on the top, two over there. Now it does have a section for both, however. I really don't know. I'll put it, the B there for both. However, I don't know if I'll... Well, I'll try it with an SWR meter in line. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Uh, but we'll take it one step at a time. I'll tie that into it there. Now that one is tied into the 2 meter 440, but it also has a tie-in for HF. So that meter can be used for both at the same time. So that's what I'll be doing. So, all right, I got to do a little cutting. I'm not going to bore you guys anymore. I'll be right back. All right, I checked the connector. All right. The now connector is good. Uh, let's, we'll go so the antenna the jumper, the three-foot jumper that I was using, is fine. And again, how you check it is you get an ohmmeter. For those who don't know, you take your two ends. doesn't make a difference when you're checking ohms what side you want to use. And in this case, this meter will give me an indication. That's Coast Guard. Turn that down for a minute. All right. Um, and that's how you check. If I have that sound, that means I have a connection or continuity from one point to another. If I was checking a piece of wire or something like that. Uh, if I'm checking against it, for instance, uh, with the coax, it has, we'll say, two wires the center and the shield and I don't want the two to connect so if I go from shield to center as I was showing you yesterday uh, and if I got that that tells me I have a short so I wouldn't want that so meanwhile what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in antenna one and I'm going to put this one in antenna two and when I do this I should get a beep and I'm not so that's telling me I've got a bad switch all right now let's see if two nope let's go to two hold on nope i'm not getting it there either now am i getting it on the ground side that i should see yeah all right so i am getting it on the ground side which is not a big deal at this point because i got to get it on the center so i got to find out why i'm not so let me open this little puppy up and i'll be right back to you That's a power switch. Now that's the kind of connections I want. But this would never work. Because there's no... Um, I can't say that because... I bet you I can make this work. And this has got the type of connection inside that I was talking about. Hmm, what I'm thinking here is, put a plate on the back, put my SO239s to the plate, connecting to the stud, basically what I'm talking about here, so you don't know, is, uh, let me see here, I should have SO239. Take one of these, have a plate on the back, bolt it to the plate, have a good gauge connecting to it. Actually, I can probably connect right to it and solder right to it, counter drill a hole, and uh, slide that right in and put some solder in there. And then the antenna will screw to this, which will be mounted to the plate on the back. And the grounds, which is the part that screws on, the outer part, I can just tie those all together. Oh, wait a minute. You know what? I even got a metal plate. Wait a minute. I bet you I can make a better switch. Here's a metal plate. So, if I wanted to drill and mount one of these in each three points, this would automatically ground them 
so I don't have to worry about the ground and it's just a matter of the uh, soldering of the, the center. Now the problem being is once the plate goes on I'm not going to have much room for soldering. So the other uh, the other idea would be not to use this SO239 but to use uh, let me see here I do have what I'm talking about Well, basically, what I'm talking about, because I'm not going to drive you guys nuts, is something like this. It has this on one end, and like here. So it would be this without this. And then when it comes up through the hole, so basically I can attach it to there, drill the holes. When I put the plate on, they'll come up through the holes, and then there's a nut, a lock nut to tie it down. And I do have some of those around here. You know what? I might be able to make a better switch than I can buy. That was a big old power switch I made. Ka-chunk. <laughs> For 12 volts. So, there's a double blade switch that I had to put together for something. And I don't remember what. Now, I can use these. I'm glad I found that. Leave that out. All right. I'm going to think about this, guys. I'll be back for a minute. Well, this was the one I was talking about, but yet this one here also tightens up from the bottom, see, and there's not enough for me to catch it on the top, so that one's not going to work. I need one like this, and I know they make it to where it tightens down from the top, and this is a little bit longer, probably double the length, so... Uh, I don't think I have any scrap radios around here. If I have some scrap CBs or something, I can probably take a couple off the back of the chassis. Yeah. Now this one, I can probably make it work. It gives me enough thread if I had a way of attaching it from the top once it's been on there, if you know what I mean. Because I got to drill holes, I have to attach this to this, then I have to bring it, place this down over the three of them, and then have a way of attaching this to this. And there's no room in there to really work to try to get a, uh, a connection, like a, like a nut and bolt or a screw or something like that hmm no there's not enough room in there for that all right i guess i can stand it off a little more which would give me room first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to drill holes in the center of these things i'll be right back all right now here's what i mean I already couldn't use this unit bit all the way because it wouldn't go down far enough. If I brought it down far enough, I couldn't get the piece of material underneath it. So I went with the next size unit bit. Well, guess what? I can't get down far enough with this one either. Now, I can lower it a little bit more, but it's still not going to allow me all the way down. So now I got to raise or lower the bed. I could have raised the bed a little more, but... Now I gotta lower the bed, put the wood under it, and get the right height, and then I gotta drill through the, the material in the wood at the same time. And that's what I mean. It just doesn't give you enough throw. That's the problem. Right. Uh, you know, for a basic bit. And in this case, what I'm trying to do here is just it's time consuming. You know, it's more of a time thing than it is anything else. If I was doing this and uh, had to use this to make money with as a living, I would be losing a lot of time dicking with this stuff. All right, so there's me holes. And not bad. 
pretty well lined them up. So now these are going to go in there. Now I don't know how much room I have. It feels like I got plenty of room. Good. So I can solder those right to that. Now I can probably get in there. Hey, you know what? I can. I can get in there with the solder. So I can drill these in and bolt these in. Let me put them all in place to make sure everything lines up. Yep, they do. Okay. Good. Good, good, good. They all line up. This one's a little different, so let me get another one that match the rest of them. I don't want them all to be the same. There we go. Alright. The same, the same. The same. Oh no, this one's different. Hold on. Hold on. It's not different in the material, it's just different the way it's made. If you look at these two, you'll see that this one has a larger whip on it than that one. Which really doesn't make too much of a difference, to be honest with you, because they both fit in. But I like to have them all the same. So that's a white one. This is a brown one. That's a brown one. That's a brown one. So those are all the same. So we got one, two, three the same. Okay. Yeah, call me picky. Picky. <laughs> All right. So that's what we're going to have so far. Well, that guy go that way. We need Japan all facing the same way. So that will show good workmanship. <laughs> All right, like I do good workmanship. So anyway, guys, now that I got these, let's get these in place here. And I want it this way. So we're going to do it one at a time. And I'm going to put a mark on it. Let me mark it so I know where I'm drilling it. supposed to be good okay be difficult you want to be that way fine So anyway, next month, I go for my colonoscopy. Yes. I'm using a different doctor this time. Uh, Duffy, that's enough. I know you see him across the... There's, he sees the dog being walked across the way. 
See, I can't let Duffy out of the gate. Now, I could let Bear out. If I let Bear out, he would go over and play with the other pup. And then if I call him, he'd come back. Now, I wouldn't let him out without me being with him, but I can trust Bear is where I'm going. Uh, Duffy and them, they get sidetracked. They'll go over there and start playing until they see a squirrel or something. And next thing you know, they're gone. They hear nobody. They see nobody. They're in their own world. Uh, however, Duffy I would be able to catch because he's a little overweight. <laughs> Uh, Nicky, all I can do is keep up with him and hope that he sees the door open on the van because if he sees the door open, he will run to the van and jump in because he wants to go for a ride. Um, and I'll take him for a little ride to say, okay, good boy for jumping in the van, but bad boy for running away. Uh, Tucker, hit and miss. Lance, I don't know. Uh... I, 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 I got the feeling I can let him out, but I don't know uh, if he was to see somebody, or not somebody, but another animal, uh, what he would do. I know Bear wouldn't bother. He would play, unless the other animal decided he didn't want to play. Um, Tucker would probably play as well. Nicky, he just wants to run. You know, Huskies, they like to run. Uh, Duffy, like I say, he's kind of like just a big old, here I come. And then Lance is the one I don't know exactly how he'd react. He's kind of, all of a sudden, Lance got, the last year or so, um, he got like shell-shocked for some reason. I mean, for anything. You know, now, we don't beat our dogs. We don't yell at our dogs. You know, uh, we discipline them, you know, with, kind words and treats um, so there's no reason for him to be that way uh, but now like if I was to shovel I was shoveling something and he's laying down we'll say 30 feet away and I accidentally dropped the shovel he'd get up and go hide you know I mean he's gotten really timid lately now what I think it is is he had two surgeries on his uh, on his legs, back legs, back about six years ago, seven years ago. Um, the, uh, what is it, the ACL, AL, ALC, whatever it is. Um, one went, and then eight months later, the other one went. So I was thinking he may have an arthritis and pain issue, so he doesn't want to get involved with anything. So I started giving him, well the wife did, we started giving him like an anti-inflammatory uh, medicine uh, and that seemed to help a little bit and uh, about a month and a half, two months ago, at night only, we actually give him a pain pill, um, which is, you know, subscribed to Duffy for pain, because Duffy's got a bad case of arthritis and I think Lance has also got it because of the surgery. And I noticed that Lance is a little bit better when he's got the pill in him. So I'm thinking he goes to the vet next month. When I take him to the vet, I'm going to mention what's going on. And I think that uh, they'll probably let us put him on one in the morning and one at night. Um, you know, and that's what it is. So we'll see what happens. Other than that, I totally lost track of where I'm at. And here I go again, running up time. I'll be right back. Well, here we are, so far. Underneath is all clean and ground down. Same here under the screws. Loctite under the screws. I didn't use the red, I used the blue. Um, put a grounding screw just in case I want to ground it off. Now this is going to go on here. And then I got a solder all those connections in there so that is next and then when i'm all done i'll tape everything off and i'll throw a coat of paint on it So, mm -hmm. 
What I do want to check though is, I should have done this before I went nuts with that, but I can always use that. Good, no good. Good, no good, perfect. Off, should turn both off, which that's, the only concern is with the off, and the both because this was made for a battery so both meaning both antennas which is not going to be a good idea but at that point it's working I just got to remember to uh, to get rid of this and uh, this and just have one and two really no way of not having that inside for the hard part I gotta try to get these hot enough and that's a lot of a lot of heat there to uh, get solder to stick what I'm doing is I put a couple of little holes in it so that these tits will fit in the hole and I just clean the top off these are uh, looks like uh, brass or copper uh, and what I want to do is uh, put a couple pieces of solid on that let me get the shout in. You'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. I transplanted myself into every single human being. Because now I can transplant myself into every single Time Lord. Oh yes, Mr. President, sir. Standing there all noble and resplendent and decrepit. Think how much better you can look. Here we go. Kind of just fit there to fill the void a little bit. Not that I need any more length, but I want to be able to fill that void and not have it filled with the uh, solder alone. Okay, turn that down. This TV's going to be way too loud for you guys. So I'm used to hearing it and walking around and doing things, but for some reason the camera seems to magnify the audio and uh, we end up with a lot more noise on the, on the film than we should have. Now I'm wondering if I should use this iron or the other one. Let's use this one. I guess. Actually, I may have to get the solder gun out for this. That's probably what I'm going to have to do. <sighs> Let's see. problem with this is this tip isn't in the best of shape. 
I don't use this a whole lot. I guess I could just bend some bend some wire and make a tip. Uh, now we'll see what happens. I know what's going to happen. It's going to want to heat up right here and not up there. So I should be able to just maybe straighten it out a little bit and that may help. Uh, maybe not. Let's we'll see what happens. Is this should be the right thing to do? Not really. I'm just trying to get it to go to the farthest point here. And we'll see what happens. Yeah, we got the iron going as well, so let's see if the iron's ready. Is the iron ready? Uh, I get a little carried away with flux. You guys notice that? See, this may not. This may not. Let's see. Let's cut this down a little bit. No sense heating all that up if I don't need it all. Right? All right. So I don't want to get it so hot that I melt the uh, insulator. There. Nice. I can deal with that. Hang the solder right on my side so I can burn myself with it. What a nice day out. It's even got a nice fresh smell. Kind of like the smells I used to smell when I was a kid. We didn't have all the pollution. And you had that nice spring air on the farm. Yeah. Just an, a nice day all the way around. A good day with a good smell. <laughs> now, let me put a little flux on the solder, seeing that I didn't get it any on the, uh, on the whatchamacallit. You know, years ago when I used to work at this uh, shop, I wasn't doing their service at first, because they had a service guy there, and I didn't want to step on anybody's toes, and I was managing the shop anyway, so I had enough on my plate. But uh, he kept saying, oh, I don't use flux. You just flux and you're not going to get it hot enough. Well, we used to go through more shit with him because he would end up burning stuff because he was getting it too hot. 
And yes, you could get something too hot and burn things, and that's what he used to do. You know, because he wasn't sure. <clears throat> and he didn't want to get cold solder joints. Well, you know what? Pay attention to what you're doing, and you shouldn't have a problem. You don't have to get that hot to where you have to start melting things. Okay, so that's good. So that will fit right there. Now it's just a matter of, you know what, I gotta, I gotta drill that a little bit more. I'll be right back, guys. All right. Well, you know, I haven't heard anything on the radio, meaning the town radio, you know, police, fire, rescue. But I noticed, for some reason, the trains are going by very, very slow. Now, where I am as comparison to the train station is actually quite close. Even though I can't see it, I hear no traffic from it, um, but I'm kind of close to it to where they don't necessarily have to slow down I'm far enough away let's put it this way let me reverse this a little bit they don't have to go that slow in order to stop if you know what I mean now here's one that's going right through that's going to Boston That's the train that uh, the kid laid in front of on the tracks and committed suicide. But the trains that are stopping at the station, both east and west, I noticed are slowing down a lot. A lot more than normal. Um, you know, to, to get to the station. Yeah, usually they move along pretty good to where you know they're they're going by and uh, now they're going by so slow I can probably walk alongside of it and like I say we're close to the station but I'm not that close and the ones that are heading west that are entering the station from the east on the other side uh, when they leave they're going extremely slow so I don't know what's going on, but it's not right. I don't want to call anybody because it's really it's not really my concern unless I get called out. But sometimes you know you're just nosy. And I could call one of the guys that I know at Amtrak Police Department, but again. All right, now, it is getting hot enough on the tip, apparently. I want to make sure that it gets hot enough. Well, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. You can see where the heat is, right there. But I don't want the heat there. I want it down here. Now, it's letting me, right here, it's giving me some heat, but it's not letting me direct it as to where I really want it to be. What I want to do is get these little voids filled in that I drilled out, and then uh, I'll put the other thing in place, and then just heat it up, and hopefully everything will work the way I want it to work. I'll probably end up melting some of this plastic case because uh, come on see I gotta get those posts and the problem being is with the post is that uh, it goes all the way down 
into a big piece of brass. Now what I can do, and I didn't think of that until just now, I could make sure when I'm soldering, okay, they're both off, so then none of them are connected. Because if I had it connected to two, that means I'd be heating up everything in between. If I had it on one out here, but when they're not connected at all, that means they're all individuals. The Borg. The Borgers are individuals. They're part of the collective. Well, right now I'm running these as individuals. should just bend a piece of wire and get this thing made and stop dealing with this stupid tip that never works right. I am hearing something in the background. I'll edit a lot of this out, guys. I know it's boring. Boring. What I'm actually doing, for those of you who stepped in late or decided to skip through, is that this is a marine or automobile, but mainly marine uh, selector switch for batteries. So that you can turn the batteries on off or connect two or three or whatever you want together and i am attempting to modify it to make it an antenna switch because the connectors on this thing inside are great more so than any antenna switch i've ever seen So let that sit for a minute. Well, this is where I'm at. It's done, basically. Uh, I pinched it down more. If you can see it, how it's kind of beveled. Because um, I tightened it down in here. And, and why I did that was, it was a little hard for me to make sure that I had a good solder joint down in there where I had to solder the bottom of the connector to the top of that stud because the stud being so damn heavy and so damn long uh, it just wanted to suck up heat so I wasn't sure how good of a connection I actually got there now I did stick a piece of wire up inside every little connector let me show you what I'm talking about. Yeah, if I can get my paws in here. <clears throat> There's a little opening here. So what I did was I stuck the wire in there. Yeah, in this case, the other one is bigger. Uh, and the wire fit perfectly, and I soldered it. And I left it hanging out about an eighth or so of an inch. Then I dimpled, I put a little drill mark in each top of each stud. <clears throat> so, looking at it, at the stud, alright, um, I kind of like dimpled this out a little bit, so it's drilled out just a, got a little crevice in it. Then the other piece, which is this, which is relatively soft, that's 
soldered into here, into this connector. So I fill this with solder. I soldered that into there so it stuck out a little bit. Then I pushed up against it and I clipped it down so that this actually started to mushroom a little bit in there. And then I soldered it in as well. Because there was a pool of solder in there already. So I got a pretty good connection there. So I had to kind of do this because I couldn't get in there with any real heat. So by pushing these together, you know, pushing it on tight, it's putting pressure against these as well, helping the connection to stay, if you know what I mean. So that's how it is. Now, they look like they're fine and they were holding before I even put the the bolts in there to help tighten it down more into it so uh, it did however give me just a little bellow as, as you can see um, not much but a little bit <clears throat> I was going to enclose this I've got some ABS plastic I got some Kydex and I got some Warbler so I was going to put an enclosure around this but I said you know what for now uh, I may just leave it open. I don't know yet. Or just wrap it with some tin. I got some tin I can wrap it with too to close it off. <coughs> there is RF going through there, but I don't think it's going to bother anybody. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to try it just like it is. And if it works, then I'll worry about the closing it off because I can cut some tin, tap it in, cut it, tap it, cut it, tap it, and then uh, I got a ground screw here so I can make sure the whole case is grounded to help uh, any leakage uh, from giving me a highest of you are or something. We'll see what happens once I get it hooked up. So meanwhile I'm just waiting for it to dry a little bit and then uh, if it works I may take it all apart and you redo the whole thing a little differently. I don't know yet. What will be done with us? I don't know. But we'll see what happens. Alright. So, where am I today? Meanwhile, back at the ranch, I hooked up the end fed wire. And this is the coax coming in from it. Right now it's just there. However, I am going to tack it up along the ceiling with the other one and then bring it back this way and then bring it down that way and then bring it out this way. However, I want to check it first to make sure that everything is okay. Now, this little skinny one that you're probably not going to see is right, where's my finger? Right about there. Right there, see it? You can see the little choke. Uh, and then the other one over there, well, I'm sorry, that's the one over there. That's the center fed. The one over here that you can barely see is the end fed. That's the one that goes 132 feet out into the woods there, out yonder. And then on top of the tower, which the sun is going to blind you, so I can't do it, but I'm up here uh, is where the little boxes I'm gonna call it the box for the, and off the ground side of that box I ran another oh probably 75 feet or so of wire which is just hanging right now it's not up that is going to go that direction or possibly that direction I don't know yet for sure uh, we'll see what happens and uh, that's where I'm at with that. Ah. So other than that, it is hooked up. I am going to be trying it. This is now the center fed. And that is the end fed. So this is the one that has been up for about a year. This is the one that I just put up and tied into yesterday. Well, I put the antenna up a couple of days back because I wanted it to kind of get stretched out and everything. But that's where we're at with that. 
and uh, now I'm going to test it and see what happens. I am not going to keep you guys uh, on the video going because it's just going to eat up a lot of time, and I use a lot of time already on you guys, so uh, I, I don't want to uh, bore you too much. So at that point, I will test it, and uh, I may show you a quick test, but we'll see what happens at that point. And then if everything works right, then I'll start stringing the wire uh, either that way first, because I don't need a ladder to string it that way. Uh, I will need a ladder if I string it towards the house, because there's a pole. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it with the sun shining. Well, you may not be able to see it anyway, but between the tower poles here on the roof of the house, you see the chimney. I don't know if you can see the chimney or not, but uh, right next to the chimney, there's a pole. That pole actually was there since the house has been built. Um, it goes from the ground all the way up, and it's about six feet above the roof. And... Uh, if I run the wire that way, I'm going to run it to that pole. The problem being is this the center fed also runs to that pole. And I would have this wire probably two feet below that one. And that I don't like because it may interfere. So that's one of the reasons why I'm thinking about running it that way. Um, and then at that point, it's not going to interfere with anything. Everybody. All right, so, this particular frequency, now, it's hooked up the way it used to be. That's the, uh, vertical, which is antenna number one. That is the center fed. Uh, you can tell a difference. There's differences. This is a little louder, but yet a little bit noisier. That's a little quieter. So the antennas on different frequencies tend to work differently. That's why it's hard to just have one antenna. Now, one antenna would work. I'd have no problems working with one antenna. But seeing that I've got the room, I've got the time, uh, I don't mind running these other antennas. Because also, the way that I run the antenna would also determine where my signal's going to go. Anybody else? Any other nine reporting for that, please? Okay. okay, so now I'm going to unscrew the end fed, okay, I mean the center fed. Anybody in eight land with a looking at victory next come now, please? And I'm going to screw in the new end fed, or try to anyway. I'm get my paw back there. Like I said, next All time. Right, there. Let's go for I'm going to make it so I can Anybody walk around seven it. Seven land now for the net. Come now, please. Oh, yeah. Get in there. All right. Now let's see if I can get it. Oh, yeah. Good morning, Jim. You sounding good. Okay. He's at SLA. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? Anybody else in seven lands for the net today? Go ahead. Seven land. Nine. Eight. Numbers of designations as to your rotation. All right, nothing heard. Let's go for sixes. Anybody in six land today for the net? Come now, please. You can check those to find out what he's talking about if you go on the internet. If you're interested. And I just touched the VFO, which means I knocked them right off. Uh, we want four. Go back down. 40, come on, 409. Okay, uh, Joe, I don't know where Joe is. There we are. Alright, so now, okay, well, we'll go on for five I'm sitting on the switch. And, uh, we have now that's the vertical Joe. again. Well, I'm uh, off here a few hertz, so let me get these we'll in the play. Okay, nothing heard. Let's go for four. We do have uh, wow. WD4 SSG. That's the long wire end fed. Get Joe listed in here down Lake Plaza, Florida. Oh, what a difference, huh? Joe. It's always nice to know that you're either listening or you're uh, checked in. All right. That's Thanks, the Joe. vertical, okay, which is usually Florida. the best Any antenna out of the two for where I'm normally listening and talking to. 
However, the center fed uh, is another one that works. You heard it, it works fine. Uh, but again, it's somewhat directional. But when okay, I not hearing anybody in four lamps. When I go Let's to the go new antenna, now. the one I just put up, oh, a macro emmy. Uh, it does a nice job. Holy macro. Now, I don't know how it's going to transmit just yet because I haven't checked the SWRs. But uh, so far, I'm happy with it. So now, it's just a matter of uh, figuring out what I'm going to do for a switch. Well, oh, guys, I've got a few small projects today. I'm not going to run you through all of them. But um, one was, uh, I have to get to Home Depot. This is actually a battery switch. A heavy-duty kerchunk battery switch that has a real good connection uh, for um, connecting the batteries other than just a set of points like you know the old points in a distributor so I decided to modify it to make it an antenna switch now it's all wired what I need to do though is I need to get to Home Depot because I want to get some more copper this is just copper tape. Now this works, but it doesn't really fit the bill as far as looks. So I want to get some copper flashing so that I can actually box this in and make it look a little better uh, than what it is. And at the same time, give me a little bit more of a bolt pattern for bolting it in. So that's what I'm in the middle of doing with this particular project uh, for an antenna switch. I made that switch. I do want to go down to Home Depot though today or later this evening because um, I want to get some soft uh, copper flashing um, that I can wrap this with and have it a little bit better looking than just using copper tape. Now the copper tape works. It's not a, an issue with it not working. It's conductive. It'll work. It's going to you know keep everything where it's supposed to be. Um, however, I would rather have it look a lot neater. So by picking up some copper flashing, or uh, if I can find some soft copper, I can just do what I have to do. So that's what I'm going to do there. Now I did redo the front. So what I need to do now is, is I got to cut uh, some lettering for it because I want to put antenna one, or at least a numeral one over here on the left side off up on the top two over there now it does have a section for both however I really don't know I'll put it the B there for both however I don't know if I'll well I'll try it with an SWR meter in line and if it works it works if it doesn't it doesn't uh, but we'll take it one step at a time I'll tie that into it there now that one is tied into the 2 meter 440 but it also has a tie-in for HF so that meter can be used for both at the same time so that's what I'll be doing so all right I gotta do a little cutting I'm not gonna bore you guys anymore I'll be right back <laughs> 